Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I am proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. Now, I'm going to show you this just overwhelming evidence with a connection to Michael Jackson and orphans. It's one of these things, I was making this video, and then it's like there was just so much right and so I kept having to pull up another picture and pull up another picture and then it's like I can't pull up all the videos I'd like to do and make it it's just way too much right it's just one of these things so here's uh, Michael Jackson with George Lucas right which is basically we consider him the creator of Star Wars and stuff he didn't actually create the first one and shit but he, he directed it I believe that's how he directed it and then after that he basically was doing everything and shit right but so basically we call him like the creator of Star Wars and shit right but so now when you think of Star Wars you're, you're not instantly thinking like orphans and stuff but think about it like Princess Leia and Luke Skywalker they're raised as orphans basically they're raised without their parents the mother dies in birth and then the father is turned to the dark side and become Darth Vader so they're raised without their parents so there is a very big theme of the Star Wars uh, movies that has to do with orphans and stuff right and so here's Michael Jackson with George Lucas and so that's what I'm showing you it's like it's just this massive connection with orphans and stuff I've got so much stuff here and I was pulling stuff up it's like I don't know we'll, we'll, we'll see how it comes out and stuff but I don't I can't guarantee it's gonna come out in order and stuff right so like this was another one that just came up and it's like oh no, I have to throw that picture in there too Michael's got some kind of album with ET I'd have to go back and look and see exactly what is it that he did he did some kind of album with ET I don't, it's like he actually did something with that right but so ET is like stranded here on earth right away from his parents he's like an orphan right and he's he's always saying et phone home et phone home right there's something about that that it's like even though he's an alien when you look at the understanding it's like he's like an abandoned child he's like an orphan and michael did something with that movie he's got some kind of michael jackson et album and shit i don't know exactly what songs are on and stuff but i know there is something out there that exists with that right it's just this constant connection to orphans and stuff right so now this is uh, an interview. Like I said, I gotta I align these things and stuff all better, right? So there's Michael Jackson, and over the picture sitting behind him, it's a Shirley Temple, and as you can see there, it says Little, right? Little Orphan Annie, because she did the Little Orphan Annie. Little Orphan Annie, Shirley Temple. Who, what's her, one of her biggest roles? Little Orphan Annie. Little Orphan Annie. This is like why Michael liked her so much and shit, too. Okay, so, like I said, these things are not in order, so, like, later on, I might come back. I, I think I have another picture in here somewhere with Annie and stuff. Like I said, I'll, I'll show it to you. And then some things I want to show you, like a little video and stuff. So, this is the Martin Bashir documentary that was done with Michael Jackson. He's <laughs> so funny with his umbrella. Okay, but Michael Jackson's getting ready to pull up to, he's going to talk to Martin Bashir. He's going to be talking about the Giving Tree because all the Michael Jackson fans would know what the Giving Tree is. It's a song. It's a tree that Michael Jackson would sit in and write songs. And I actually wrote them down. So the four songs that he mentions here that he wrote in the Giving Tree is "Heal the World," "Will You Be There," "Black or White," and "Childhood." And like especially like "Childhood," but all those songs. It's like those songs. Like I said, these songs relate to this story. So there's those songs that Michael Jackson wrote in the Giving Tree, which you'll find when you hear those songs, you'll find this connection to him being an abandoned child, that being lost and stuff, and caring for people and wanting to care and all that stuff. But especially like childhood is just brutally like honest and stuff, right? See, that's a picture. I knew I forgot to bring something up. I was going to bring up that picture that I show you from childhood and I show you that Michael Jackson's got on the album cover for childhood. He's got that picture looking like, uh, See, I get confused. Uh, the, see, I said there's so much stuff going in my head. But that old, uh, the silent film guy, for, this, for some reason his, name, his name's not coming to my head right now and stuff. But he's got that picture with him, but it's that movie um, with the movie called The Kid. You know, he's got that picture and stuff. 
uh, it pisses me off when I can't think of a name. So that's what I'm saying. It's like the stuff, there's so many names and stuff. There's so much stuff out there. This confusing and stuff, right? And I'm not trying to make a perfect video. I'm going to make mistakes because I got too much stuff here and stuff, right? Charlie Chaplin. I see. I, it's like, that's what I do. I start talking and I forget. I So that's what you have to do when you want to remember something. If the more you try and remember it, then you're not going to remember it. So what I try and do is I'll start talking about things that relate to it and I'll put that out of my head and then the name will just pop into my head. So Charlie Chaplin, right? But so yeah, with the childhood, he's got the the connection to the Charlie Chaplin which is in that picture I show you is the picture for the movie called The Kid what's the kid about an abandoned fucking child you know that one is super direct because he's abandoned by his mother the mother becomes a big star and then comes back to find she starts doing charity work and then she finds her kid in the ghetto like that that's and then you know they reunite and stuff but so like all that stuff right so Oh yeah, I was like, how did I start talking about childhood? Oh, it's like, oh yeah, because I was talking about the giving tree and shit, right? But that's what I'm saying. It's funny with my videos. And in this video, it's like, I, like I said, I got way too much stuff in here that it's like, it's going to be jumbled. And I don't make perfect videos. It's hard enough for me to put this video together and I just got to run through it as best I can. I don't even scare by it. I just try and go as fast as I can and stuff, right? So people need to just understand that's what's going on. So yeah, let me just show you. But so what I wanted to show you here is the thing I'm showing you too is that we're going to talk about the giving tree. But the thing I'm showing you is that Michael Jackson pulls up to this moment where he's going to be talking about the giving tree and those songs that he writes up there he pulls up in his little golf cart but it looks like a batmobile okay and so this is one of the things i'm going to show you i'm going to show you pictures with michael jackson with batman and spider-man and superman all stuff like that now look at what happened to batman uh his parents got killed leaving him as an orphan Spider-Man, his parents get killed. Like, I don't know the, I'm not super familiar with the spider. I, I watched one of the movies and it had his parents dying in a plane crash, but I don't know exactly. But then I looked up in the Wikipedia with Spider-Man and it said he's an orphan. You know, it says Peter Parker's an orphan, you know, and is raised by his aunt and uncle or whatever it is. I was talking with James Lieberman. We were going all over this stuff last night. And because I was like saying, yeah, that's right. Spider-Man was raised by his grandparents. And he says, no, no, he's raised by his aunt and uncle. <laughs> and it's funny. It's like, like I said, I don't always know exactly and stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, I know he's something like that. But what is it? So like, so he's telling me, no, no, because he was telling me Spider-Man's an orphan too. Peter Parker's an orphan. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. He's raised by his grandparents, right? And he's like, no, no, he's raised by his aunt and uncle. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny shit, right? So, like, I'm going to show you pictures related to that, but I want you to see here is that he's in the Batmobile, right? Showing you this connection. So, most people, you wouldn't see the connection to Michael Jackson in the Batmobile. You would not think orphan. There would be no thought that would ever come into your mind about orphan because Michael Jackson is part of the... When you think of Michael Jackson, you think of the Jackson family. Right? You think of the kid from Gary, Indiana. There would be no thought that ever would come into your mind about an orphan. And that's why I have to show you this and show you how blatantly obvious Michael Jackson was using the symbolism of the connection to orphans and stuff. He did it over and over again, right? So, so let me just, I'll play you a little piece of this here. The climate is a problem for Jackson. He says the color changing skin condition vitiligo has made him allergic to the sun. So shielded by his umbrella, he took me to his most secret place. I call it my giving tree because it inspires me. Uh, that's that's a dub. I, uh, he talks about song, but I just wanted to play that because the Giving Tree. It's such a it's such a important thing and stuff, right? Michael Jackson fans would all know about that stuff. But I wanted you just to see that as he's coming up to that moment where he's going to be talking about the Giving Tree, he's riding up in this Batmobile, and so. The, the Gibby Tree inspires him to write songs like Childhood. And you people don't see the connection to the, the of Orphan, but he's putting it right in your face. You know, it's serious stuff, and it's constantly over and over. So now I'm going to go to another picture. Like I said, I got so much stuff here, I don't even know if like, I'll click on Okay, yeah, here was another. So this was a photo when they were uh, raiding Michael Jackson's house and stuff, right? This is one of those photos. So there's Shirley Temple again, as you can see over there. Trying to get in so you can see it say, it says, uh, oh, it says Shirley Temple, but I thought it said Little. I thought it said Little Orphan Annie, but I think there's even another picture over there and stuff. Right, it's but all this Shirley Temple stuff, but I showed you that the Shirley Temple was the Little Orphan Annie, as he had in the other one. So as he's got all that Shirley Temple stuff, now he's really, he's also very much supports young child actors and stuff, right? But it's the Little Orphan Annie thing that's that other thing that nobody ever saw. You just say, oh no, he likes the child actors and stuff because that's, he was young actor and stuff, right? But you don't see that 
that other thing, the little orphan Annie thing. That's the thing that nobody saw. And actually the connection when he's loving the Shirley Temple, what he's seeing is this girl, the little orphan Annie. That's what he's, the, the real connection and the real draw that Michael Jackson had to this stuff, that's what it's actually about. So I even forgot, I forgot that I even pulled this picture up and stuff, right? Because But this is an actual painting that was done for Michael Jackson. It's not just some random painting that somebody had done. This was the guy that was Michael Jackson's primary artist who had done this picture, right? And so Michael Jackson as the sword from the sword in the stone. That is the King Arthur story. King Arthur was an orphan. He was an orphan child who pulled the sword out of the stone and became the king. That's the King Arthur story. So like I said, when you see that picture, you don't see orphan, but that's what it actually is. It's orphan. It's an orphan story. Constantly, over and over and over again, this is what Michael Jackson was doing. Okay, so this was this was also a photo from when Michael Jackson's house was raided. As you can see over here, he's got this life-size Batman here and a life-size Superman, right? So Superman, what happened? His parents, their planet's about to be destroyed and his parents are about to die and they send him off in the little capsule thing and send him to Earth and stuff, right? Where he's an, he's an orphan child. Again, when you're seeing or Superman and Batman, you're thinking superheroes and stuff like that. You're not seeing Orphan. And look at what it is over and over and over again. Everything of what I'm showing you has a direct connection to Orphans and stuff. And this was the connection. This was the uh, what Michael Jackson, what he what it really inspired him was this Orphan thing. So there he is. There's Michael Jackson. It's, maybe it was that same statue and stuff, right? That same Superman, but he's doing the Superman pose. Right? Like I said, when you see Superman, you don't think, that's not the first thing that you're thinking is orphan, but this is what it is. This is why Michael's connected to this stuff. It's orphan, the orphan thing that's constantly there is what Michael is actually showing you. So here's a photo of Michael Jackson as a kid, Superman. It's constantly there. Michael Jackson as an adult. Superman, constantly there. It's constantly this undertone. And what you have to see is that this connection to all of these people of what he's doing. And then, like I'm going to show, I'm going to get into the Neverland Ranch. And I'm going to show you something else, too, to show you how it all brings it all together. That there is there is much more. This is not just Michael Jackson appreciating these characters. There's more to it because he lived in Neverland Ranch. And I'll show you even enough that, to end it with the really fucked up thing and stuff, right? So here's Michael Jackson and his kids. He's got his kids dressed up like Superman, but he's also got... Uh, Paris is wearing the ruby red slippers, right? And that's Dorothy when she goes away. And what, what's the line when she wears the ruby red slippers at the end? There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. That's what she's saying. There's no place like home. But Michael Jackson, he has no home because he was abandoned as a child. And that's what this is all about, these little subtle details in these images. And he's got him in the Spider-Man, an orphan. Spider-Man's an orphan. And then she's wearing the ruby red sleep slippers. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. This is what's going on with him. This is like why he's like living in Neverland Ranch but he's part of the Jackson family and it contradicts itself. Nobody could understand what that's about. That's why they start calling him a pedophile because it was much easier for the public for their minds to transition to that, oh, Michael's fucking these kids. That, they could do that. They could make that connection. They could accept that. That's all acceptable, right? But they can't make the connection that, hey, maybe there was, Diana Ross was 14 and got pregnant by 18-year-old Smokey Robinson. And because of the circumstances that were taking place at that time and place in history, maybe they abandoned their child. And then that child just so happened to be Michael Jackson. That's a, that's a very simple, very simple story. These two young artists who... Diana gets pregnant at 14. It was the wrong time in place for them to raise the child, so they abandoned the child to somebody who got the child because of the connection to Barry Gordy, who has musical interest in his past, Joe Jackson. So you don't think that it's very simple and common that when he gets this kid from Barry Gordy, and Barry Gordy now is building Motown Records, that maybe Joe Jackson comes up with an idea, hey, let me try and build a band. 
You don't think that that is a very simple, easy explanation of what had occurred? That's what had happened. But no, you, all the public though, no, they want to say, oh no, he's fucking kids. That's so obvious what happens. He's fucking kids. And that's the obvious explanation for all of this stuff to you people. I'm not saying this world is fucking disgusting, man. Bunch of fucking dirt balls. So this is Michael again with the, the kids in the Spider-Man outfits. And there he's got a Spider-Man with him. Right? And then this is like some framed picture where he framed the outfit that one of the kids was wearing, the Spider-Man. He put it in a frame that looks like that's what this is and shit, right? But there I'm showing you with the Spider-Man stuff, right? So, and like I said, all the people, the Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, all orphan children. All of them. All of them orphan children. Here's Michael with uh, Marvel because Michael was going to, there was a... Uh, time where Michael Jackson actually tried and thought about buying Marvel so he could play Spider-Man, right? He really wanted to do that shit, right? It was it was cause specifically because Spider-Man, that was the role that he wanted to play. When you could hear the Stan Lee interviews, that's what Stan Lee says. Michael called me and he's talking, he wanted to play Spider-Man and if, maybe he could buy Marvel. If, he, if they won't let him do it, he'll buy Marvel. And Stan Lee said, I don't think that they'll do that shit, you know? I don't think they're gonna let you do that shit. But that's the thing that was, that actually happened. That, that was the thing that was in the works. You can go listen to Stan Lee, talk about it and shit, right? And now we're getting to uh, Peter Pan. So that's uh, Prince Michael Jackson Jr. in his little Peter Pan outfit, right? Because Michael's all into uh, in the Neverland Ranch and Peter Pan. Let me show you more. And so like I said, this is a, a drawing from Michael Jackson. There it is signed by Michael Jackson, drawing of Peter Pan, right? Because he's living in the Neverland Ranch. He's got this fondness attraction for uh, Peter Pan. Right? And this is uh, the Lost Boys, right? Peter's Lost Boys, right? What are the Lost Boys? A bunch of orphan children, right? Peter's the leader of them. That's what the Neverland Ranch is, right? And the, Michael's Peter Pan, living in the Neverland Ranch, wanting to be this leader and this, you know, a guide or guidance, guiding figure, father figure for all these orphan children. That's what the whole story of Peter Pan's about. Michael's living in Neverland Ranch, right? And then the Neverland Ranch, <clears throat> this is the video for Say, Say, Say with Michael Jackson and pa Paul McCartney. This is the video. This is where they shot the video. This is the actual video. This is before Michael Jackson buys the Neverland Ranch. But what happens in the video is there's this thing that happens in the video. It's, see, it says, Mrs. Ensign's Orphanage. This is in that video. This is on the piece of property that is about to become the Neverland Ranch. This is in the video. So Michael makes the video with Say Say Say, and in the video, there's an orphanage in the video. Then Michael buys that piece of property where he filmed this video and turned it into the Neverland Ranch. Let me play a little piece of this. See, doesn't that look like Peter Pan? There's going to the orphanage with all the, the, the lost boy children and stuff. It's just like, like I said, there's the orphanage. There's Michael Jackson at the orphanage. This, this video, it, when people, Michael Jackson, people know this. This video was filmed on the piece of property that Michael turned into the Neverland Ranch. It's that piece of property. And when you look in the video, it's an or, there's an orphanage there. And Michael then turns this from the orphanage in the video, he turns that into the Neverland Ranch, calling himself Peter Pan, the leader of the Lost Boys, all these orphan children. And he's dressing his own kids like Spider-Man, freaking like uh, uh, Peter Pan and shit, right? Okay, now, okay, so now we're to the last thing here, actually. I got through, got through all the videos, all the pictures I had pulled up. Yeah, I got all those pictures pulled up. And so now, like I said, now this is where we bring it all together to understand you the reality that Michael, it wasn't just a connection that Michael had to these things because he bought the Neverland Ranch. He bought that piece of property and he called it the Neverland Ranch. He's living there, acting like Peter, Peter Pan, right? There's no doubt about that. And so why does Michael Jackson have that personality trait if he's part of the Jackson family? 
If he's got all these brothers and sisters, and they've all got fa uh, they've all got families, and they got children, why didn't Michael get married properly and normally, and just have a where's where's his normal family with his children that we know are his children? You know, not these white kids that he bought and shit, and he fucking had him built in a lab and shit or whatever. You know. Where's his kid? Where's his real kids? That never happened. Where's his real wife that he married and had kids with? It, it never, it's not there. It doesn't exist. Something is wrong. And when you see this other thing that's going on with Michael, there's something in him, something about orphans. He's got this connection to orphans constantly over and over. And it shows you in this that it goes all the way to where Michael's just about to die. This is very close to the end of Michael Jackson's life. This is what's called the Michael Jackson slurred speech recording. This is Dr. Murray recorded Michael Jackson when Michael Jackson was highly intoxicated. Then it's like, a, it's like, what do you think? It's like a truth serum when you're on drugs and stuff and it's like a truth serum and you're, you're expressing your innermost secrets and you're showing your pains and stuff, right? So this is what you're actually getting at this moment. Michael Jackson is basically under some form of a truth serum and he's expressing his innermost pains and stuff, right? His secrets and shit, right? And so right here, he's gonna be talking about children and stuff, right? So let's listen to this. Okay, it's so hard to hear that, but he said the children are depressed, right? And we're going to get down later on to why he says that they're depressed and because it's uh, it's uh, it's in their mind and shit, right? And he's going to be talking about that their mothers abandon them and stuff. It's hard to even, I'll just play a little bit of this and then maybe I'll just read it to you. Okay, so I mean, it's so hard to even listen to that. But let me just read to you what, because this is what he's saying there, and then I'm going to read to you what he says after that. He says, children are depressed in those hospitals, no game room, no movie theater. They're sick because they're depressed. Their mind is depressing them. Their mind is depressing. Now, isn't that the sickness that Michael Jackson has of where he's got this Dr. Conrad Murray to him, drugging him up to cure this mental sickness of what he has? It's because they're sick because they're depressed. This is what he is expressing to you. His connection is understanding to these children. And he's the same way. Look at He's got a doctor with him. He's being uh, medicated, highly medicated. Why? Because he's depressed. Why is he depressed? Just like he says, their mind is depressing them. What is it in Michael Jackson's mind that is putting this kind of burden on him that is depressing him to the point of where he's got to be under this heavily intoxication state? What did that to him? Nobody can understand what it was is the pain of being known that he was abandoned as a child. And then he was raised thinking he was a Jackson, but when Diana comes back and tells him the truth when he goes to Motown, because that's the thing is that if Michael doesn't go to Motown, does Diana ever come back and tell him that she's his mother? That's what Michael Jackson had to live with. Okay, but then he does get to Motown and Diana tells him the truth, but that leaves Michael understanding that he was not a Jackson. So the family that he thought he had, he just lost that. Then he finds out that he was actually abandoned as a child. Then he's a smart kid. He knows that Diana told him because he came back to Motown and stuff. He came back on his own. If he didn't come back on his own, does Diana ever go and find him? Does he ever meet his real mother? This is now when you're dealing and then he's got to live his whole life as a lie. After Diana tells him the truth, Michael's then got to continue to live in that lie his whole life. So Michael was raised being as a Jackson and they're called the Jackson's an American dream. So everybody, all of Michael Jackson's fans and stuff were saying, we love the Jackson five and the Jackson's an American dream and, and every, every interview. And they're talking about the Jackson's and being from Gary, Indiana. So Michael Jackson, think about what kind of mental depression that that fucking life experience would put on you. This is what he's talking about. This is what's going on with the guy.
but nobody could ever understand it because everybody thought Michael is a bro Jackson from Gary, Indiana. They sold us that sore story so hard and they pounded it into our heads over and over and over again. And so nobody ever would even think about they, they Even now when I'm explaining it to them, it's, it's hard for me to break down the barriers of all the, uh, pre the, predictive programming of what they did to stuff it's not predictive program but it's the mind control programming of what they like did to us and shit right to force that image so people now when i show them the truth that image is built up as such a wall it has such a big strong house it's it's so built up that the people can't even see this as a truth because they're still burdened by the fucking brainwashing of what had occurred through all of those fucking years but it's like, that's what I say, look at, this is Michael Jackson about to die and he's heavily fucking intoxicated and he's telling you that they're sick because they're depressed and their mind is depressing them. And then, so then he goes on to the, he says, he says, uh, he says, I'm going to do it, Conrad. Conrad says, I know you would. And Michael says, don't have a no f hope, no more hope. That's the next generation that's going to save our planet. Starting with, and he said, well, we'll talk about, we'll talk about it, you know, so because then he knew oh, I'm about to ramble on and stuff, right? And so he's like, well, we'll talk about that later because that's not really what he wanted to talk about. What he wants to get back to is the abandoned children. So he says, the United States, Europe, Prague, my baby. See how he jumps right back into the my babies thing. That's what he wants to talk about. This is what is really causing him the pain. This is what he's really expressing in this because right there, as he said, oh, they're the the next generation that's going to save our planet starting with oh we'll, we'll talk about that. he got right off of that that was not really what he wants to talk about that's not really what he was interested in what he's really interested in is in the next line he says my babies he says they walk around with no mother they drop them off they leave a psychological degradation of that that's what it's all about right there they walk around with no mother they drop them off they leave a psychological degradation of that. Like he said, they're depressed because their mind is depressing them. What did the depression come from? Because they walk around with no mothers, they drop them off, they leave a psychological degradation of that. That's what Michael Jackson had to live with his whole life. And not only did he have to live with that his whole life, he had to live with it in the public eye while everybody's assuming that he's a Jackson. And that's the, what he had to live with. Now, is that the kind of mental depression and sickness that would leave this guy moving into the Neverland Ranch and feeling connected to Peter Pan? You know, what did that to him? What caused this connection to Peter Pan? What caused this connection to all of those superheroes who are all orphan children? Everything, the little orphan Annie, E.T., it's everything. It's constantly over and over. Like I said, even Star Wars. When you look at the characters of Star Wars, Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, they're like orphan children. So as Michael watched this stuff over and over and over again, what he was feeling the connection was the connection to all these orphan children. And like it says in the thing, the, the, my babies, they're all around the world. They're my babies. And they walk around with no mothers. And look at the state of mind of which he's in. It's not just some simple thing that he's likes dressing up and liking these superheroes. It's not that. It's because look at the realities of his life. He was acting as Peter Pan living in Neverland Ranch. He doesn't have a real family. He didn't he never really had that. That's not what he did. He didn't which would have been the natural progression of what you would have seen in Michael Jackson's life if he was a Jackson. It's like what I say too, even if he was homosexual, even if he was a pedophile, you would have seen a real family develop through his life. He would have had to fake it, just like how he had faked everything else, but he, he didn't like faking it and shit because his whole life was faking it and shit. And he hated having to do that shit, but then he had to do it because they started calling him a pedophile. So now he's like, he didn't, so then instead of getting a real family, which is, you know, that's what he wanted, but he had so much pain and so much mental depression of what was occurring with him that he couldn't do it. 
And so he had to fake it, which caused him more pain because now he had to realize that he's faking it. And this is not the family of the real family of how his life should have, um, it should, how it should have progressed properly. It didn't happen. And all of that stuff just kept causing more depression, more depression of which he has to bring a doctor in to dope him up, to give him, be him heavily sedated, heavily medicated, which leaves him fucking dead. You know? When are you going to get people to start caring about Michael Jackson? Stop thinking that Michael Jackson is just a song and it's just some guy that dances around. It's a real fucking human being who had real life fucking experiences that caused severe fucking mental trauma on him that left him as a fucking heavily sedated drug addict and dead. Start caring about that fucking guy. Look how much he fucking did for you. Do something for him.